Hey guys, it's Amanda, also known as Amateur Aries, and today we will be talking about my most recent hallucinations slash delusions. So, let's get started. Now, when I say these, I don't mean they're like a year ago. They're within this year. Um, I wrote them down just in case I forget. The reason why I tend to forget is I tend to just block them out of my brain because there's no point in keeping them there sometimes. And, yeah, it's mostly hallucinations, like, etc. So, let's get started. <laughs> Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer ghost. So, uh, one night, maybe two to three months ago, um, before I started my new medication, I was having these issues. And it's not just this one, one particular delusion or hallucination. It kept, ha it happened a couple of times. But I didn't write them down, so I clearly can't remember them. But I do remember they occurred. So what up happening is, it was the end of my Seroquel time, I was uh, starting to have episodes with my Seroquel, so I needed to change medications. So before that happened, I was having these weird nightmares where I would wake up and think that the nightmare was still happening. Not like in a, um, wake up, I'm still tired, it's happening, it's, I legitimately woke up I was wide awake and I still thought the nightmare was still occurring and I would cower underneath my blanket and it's not daytime I usually wake up around 2 to 4 o'clock in the morning needing to go to the bathroom or needing to let the cats out of my bedroom and well, usually when I wake up for some reason I'm wide awake and um, except for in the mornings when I get up in the mornings it's like you have to really battle me to get up but at night if I wake up at 2 or 4 o'clock in the morning I'm up I'm ready, but in the mornings I'm not. Either way, they kept occurring. But one particular that I remember is Jeffrey Dahmer. And he was a serial killer in Wisconsin who would bring in boys and adults, men, and he would rape them, kill them, and eat them. So, so yeah, I don't really want to talk much about him. But, <laughs> And he's from Wisconsin. I'm from Wisconsin, so we, it's kind of like a thing. My parents got to watch it on the news and everything when it happened. Well, either way, he's dead. He died in jail. He was killed in jail. And one night, I had a dream where he was chasing me or something like that. And I ended up waking up from it because it spooked me. And I kept thinking that his ghost was inside my room and he was going to come after me and it kept spooking me out so I literally hid underneath my blanket and had my pillow over my head that's what I usually do every night anyways I usually have my pillow over my head so if I start hearing or seeing things I can literally pretend I can block it away with my pillow <laughs> so I always have like a pillow like on my face it's just the way I sleep it's just the way I tend to grow up to sleep and that was basically all of that delusion I, I basically just told myself there has to be something wrong with this this isn't real, there has to be something wrong with this. Um, but part of my brain still believed it. And while I was battling it, I just told myself, go back to sleep, go back to sleep, go back to sleep. <laughs> and I did, I went back to sleep. <laughs> Magically, I went back to sleep. I woke up fine in the morning. It was like, it never even happened in the morning. Okay, next. Asian ghost faced in a hallway. Little backstory about my life. I love the paranormal, I love cryptids, I love monsters, I love fantasy. No, it does not affect me in any way when it comes to my schizophrenia. A lot of people think that it does, and maybe it does for some people, but it doesn't for me. It, I can't explain it. I don't see those particular things, hallucination-wise or delusion-wise, except for like the elf thing, but that's different. When it end up happening, was I saw the grudge for the first time when I was little and I learned that I have a quite a big fear of Asian ghosts. <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> I, don't, I have a fear of them. It's a lot worse. If I hear about a ghost in America, I'm like, oh cool, that's pretty cool. If I see it on TV or like watch a horror movie, I'm like, oh girl, okay, whatever. When I see an Asian ghost, I start freaking out. <laughs> I start getting spooked like chills down me. It's just a fear of mine. But one day I walked into my hallway. I think I had to go to the bathroom and it was dark and Zach was behind me. It was like getting ready for bed bathroom break. And I take a turn to the hallway 
and right there in front of me was an Asian ghost face and it was a male and he black eyes and he had like a black lining around the eyes and he was really really pale he had short hair like I remember it specifically <laughs> like it was vivid like whoa and I, I even backed up into Zach and Zach was like what, what happened I said I just had a hallucination I just saw something he's like well no there's nothing there there's nothing there and he turned on the light and nothing was there to crap out of me and it wasn't like a flash of the eye or something it was right up in my face I can tell you the details of that ghost right in my face and no my house is not haunted I promise you and if it was haunted it would not be by an Asian person because I don't think an Asian person lived in this house it only recently got like rented out to people so that hallucination happened about two months ago when I started taking this new medication and these rest of these voices happened within that last month so about two months ago I started taking Abilify again uh, and I'm taking Prozac and I'm taking Wellbutrin. When you first take medications, they don't work instantly. You have to give them about two to three months for them to kick in and start working for you. So please note that I'm not blaming the medication for not working. I am just simply knowing that during that time period, my episodes can still occur because the medication is still kind of evening out. So just to let you know, if you're on medication for the first couple of months, and you're seeing things don't blame the medication it's kicking in if you start seeing things still after about three or four months etc then talk to your psychologist about it and say hey I noticed the medication not evening out it's not helping me so let's get started with the rest of the hallucinations the rest of these happened during that first month I was taking a bill of five a lot of these are really quick so it's not like really big um, by the way that month was uh, May to June between those two I was sitting right here. This is where my office desk is. That's where my office is. I have a desk there and everything like that. I have my computer there. And I play my TV right there. I have Zach's TV right there. So I have mine and Zach's. I was playing a game. I was playing Warframe. Because that's the game I usually end up playing eventually. And it was daytime. This one didn't spook me. It just like, what? <laughs> what happened? Um, I was sitting in my spaceship on the game. And all of a sudden, I heard a male voice, a deep male voice, whispered to the left of me by the window, not by the TV. And it said, Seinfeld. It was like, just a deep male voice by my window, and it said, Seinfeld. And I turned to Zach, because he was like, right here, actually. I was like, did you hear that? <laughs> he was like, hear what? I'm like, I just heard someone say Seinfeld. He's like, no one said Seinfeld. Are you sure it's not the game? I'm like, no. It was by the window, not the TV. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> and he still thinks that it was the TV, but I know for sure it was not the TV because no one on Warframe says Seinfeld. And it was exactly, it was Seinfeld. And it was one voice and that's when it stopped. And nothing else happened. There was really nothing in the background. So I was like, why would it say that? And because I don't like Seinfeld. So I was very confused about that. This next one happened on a particular day. It was a Sunday and it was during the Game of Thrones episode 3 when they had the big battle for Winterfell. This is not like a thing where you look at the TV for too long and then you turn and the picture is still in your mind and it's there. No, this legitimately happened. I know for sure it was my hallucination. So we were watching watching the, the show, my entire family. My, my mom and dad were sitting to my right, Zach was sitting next to me, and I was watching the TV, kind of like how I'm sitting right here, the TV is like on this angle. And it, we had the lights off because we really watch it, like we have like the surround sound and everything when it comes to the two Game of Thrones. The battle's happening and I look over to talk to my mom real quick, I mentioned something, and right behind her, in the hallway, I saw a white walker and it wasn't like a picture of a white walker like how you would like I just explain with you look at the TV for too long without blinking and then you look over here and then you see the image a little bit for like a few seconds he was legit a figure standing there looking at me he had the blue eyes he had the, he was the longer haired one one of the generals I guess you would call him. and he was just standing there he didn't even have a weapon on him he just stood there and I was like oh 
was turn back to the TV. Because that's how I handle things. It's just go back to what I was doing. Screw that shit. If something's coming after me, I'll pretend it's not there for a second. And if it hits me, then I know it's real. <laughs> so that's how I responded to that. I was like, oh. <laughs> and it was, now that I look back at it, it was funny. Because that's how I handle, I handle, I handle my episodes with humor, sorry. You guys probably are thinking, that's not, you should be more serious about that. My life will always be with hallucinations and delusions and schizoaffective disorder for the rest of my life. I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm going to humor myself with it because that's how I cope. Now, lastly, these three all happen in similar, a very, very similar situation. Now, in bed, right here, this is where I lay. And I had the pillow over my head. And I wasn't asleep yet. This isn't a situation where you're half asleep half awake it was I was still awake I like I just lay down in bed we turn off the TV and it was like 10 minutes later I'm still moving around trying to get comfortable for all these situations because when you begin to fall asleep that's what I usually do and suddenly in this ear because I always lay like on this side and this ear through my pillow like, not even through my pillow, it was like next to me. So in between the pillow and my ear, I heard a little girl laugh. Like, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I got spooked by I'm like, oh my god, that's so scary. Because I don't have any children in the house. We didn't have the TV on. We just turned the TV off 10 minutes prior. I heard a little girl laugh. I was like, oh. And I just, I got chills through me and I just kind of ignored it the best I could and went to sleep. Now... Two weeks later, um, the same thing happened. I was laying on my side of my bed, pillow on my head, and I heard a little boy say hello. And I was like, oh, this one didn't give me chills for some reason. I was just like, oh, what? <laughs> and um, it didn't really spook me because I heard the little girl laugh like two weeks prior. I was like, I was set up like, okay, I'm going through some, I'm going through something. So I got to prepare myself for this. And... Again, I just ignored it and went back to sleep. But the creepiest one happened maybe three weeks ago. This one spooked me. This was when I was asleep. I was asleep, laying in bed, same position, with pillow on head. What happened was, is I was sleeping. And in my sleep, I heard a baby cry. And I woke up, thinking that maybe it was just my dream, and it just woke me up. No, after I woke up, being wide awake because it's still night time because I wake up like instantly at night for some reason and the noise the baby cry kept going just kept wang 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 and I was like we don't have children in this house and so it really spooked me I was like what the hell and I like I just laid there it's like I didn't I didn't want to move like something was telling me to get up and go look for it but I was like no, that's a dumb idea because I know for a fact there's no children in this house. So like it's just it just has to be me. It just has to be my my schizoaffective disorder. It just has to be. So I just continued sleeping after that. I don't know how I'm able to fall asleep after these things. I think it's just as like just shut up and go to sleep kind of situation. So that is all that happened recently. Um, after that month, I start, I stopped hearing things. Um, I stopped singing things. Uh, my mood swings are evening out. I had one, the last two months, two to three months, I had only one episode when it came to my mood swings, which is great. <laughs> like, it's spectacular. But I haven't really had any other problems. So those are the hallucinations. So who knows if I'll continue having hallucinations. Maybe the medications will start dying out and I won't be able to continue using them who knows uh, sometimes that can happen um, but if I have any more hallucinations or delusions I'll write them down so I can have another video because I know you guys are very curious about the delusions and the hallucinations that I see and hear and feel and I like to tell you guys so you guys can get a little bit of an idea what a schizoaffective person and a schizophrenic person might be going through so I hope you guys enjoyed this video like comment and subscribe